Welcome to the Wareham Conservation Commission meeting of January 3rd, 2024. 2024. How many checks am I going to write saying 23? <coughs> All right. The Wareham Conservation Commission will hold a meeting under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and or the Town of Wareham's Wetland Protection Bylaw Division 6 and any other applicable laws on Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. All matters listed may involve a discussion and possible vote. All hearings of the Wareham Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Town of Wareham Wetlands Protection by Law Division 6. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. And um, for the general public, this is our last meeting at 6.30. Starting with our meetings on January 17th, we will be starting at 6. Um, just a heads up, in case you like to watch us, we're going to be on a half hour early. Um, shall we start with roll call, please? Donna. Donna Cobert. Paula Jean O'Neill. Autumn Wood. Carol Melanson. Sandy Slavin. Happy New Year, Kwame Vardy. Michael Messier. Joseph Still. And Joshua Faraday. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just one other note before we go much further. If any of you went out to the Blissful Lane property, you would have driven by the brand new Shangri-La playground. I want to thank Carol Melanson on that. She has worked on that project for years. And if you're out to Shangri-La, folks, it is a brand new spanking playground. Basketball court, pavilion, parking next to the playground and play equipment. The town did one fantastic job taking care of the um, um, runoff that happens. That area used to be nothing but a puddle and they've done some great jobs with the stormwater mitigation, so it's now dry and usable. And please, if you're in the area, go play on it. Okay, I done. First, first hearing, please. Okay, this is a notice of intent. Oh, pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6, a public hearing will be held in room 320, Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass, on Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024, Josh, at 6.30 p.m. And I think you got the wrong one. We're gonna do a request for determination of applicability. Oh, we're doing, oh, the, uh, yes, I guess I do, yep. Okay, we're gonna do, on the request for determination of applicability for Michael Colometta, 18 Blissful Lane, East Wareham, Mass, to replace a deck and shed alongside of a house within the same footprint. Map 199, Lot 91, 18 Blissful Lane, Wareham, Mass. Thank you. Anybody here representing this project? Uh, I have them online, I'm writing them in now. Yes, please, thank you. Michael, if you can hear me, your mic's muted. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Michael, please identify yourself for the record. My name is Michael Joseph Colometta. Thank you, and he, uh, would you like to talk to us about your project? Um, no, no, really, I don't have any questions unless you guys have any questions. We're just trying to replace um, uh, a deck that's approximately 40 years old right now, and uh, the wood is really starting to rot, and we just want to make it a little better. And you're going to reduce the size of the deck? We are. Anything? Why don't you describe to the, the project to us in its entirety? Okay, so um, the, the yellow area is the existing shed. 
And in, inside, if you went in, you would see that all the two by fours and the wood is uh, completely rotten. We would like to um, just do the exact same shed, uh, rebuild the entire thing. We're going to make it a little bit higher, though. We're going to put an actual roof on it versus the plastic corrugated stuff that we use now and it leaks and I get squirrels in there every year. Um, the red the red section is the would be the uh, new deck. Um, we have a up, up against the house we have a sliding glass door. We're just going to extend the deck a little bit um, you know uh, from the sliding glass door left and right. And then the area on the drawing here that I'm looking at with the red lines is what we're eliminating. We're actually taking it right down. Okay, Josh, your comments on the project, please. I have no problems with the project. Um, just note that you shouldn't, you know, park a dumpster or anything behind your house. I know you have limited access to even do that, but bears noting. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, Josh, just so you know, uh, the contractor that hopefully will come in, uh, and serve us, he actually, I told him about, I actually said that to him about dumpsters, and he said he's not going to use a dumpster, he's going to use a couple of pickup trucks. Okay. Um, and any holes for the footing should be dug by hand? Yes, but we're not digging any holes whatsoever. Okay, so you, you have existing footings? Uh, correct. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing to note is um, the dock that you have on the pond. Um, okay. So the pond is considered a great pond and would require a Chapter 91 license. Did you ever uh, obtain a Chapter 91 license for it? I did not. I know when I met Sandra the other day, it raised the question. I actually, my parents bought this place in 1980, and um, there was a dock there when they bought it, which we have pictures to show that so that dock is you know uh might have been you know uh replaced wood and things like that but uh so i don't know if that matters at all but that dock was there when we bought the place in 1980 which was probably what's that 24 years ago uh 40 uh, uh 44 <laughs> years ago 44 yeah um <clears throat> uh, under the state's eye no it doesn't mean anything um and i i think the commission would probably permit it as well uh, so if you, you and I can work together on, on working that through. Okay, no problem. I'll contact you because I have no idea what to do at that at this point. Sure. Okay, I will ask the questions. Um, Paula Jean. Um, no questions, thank you. Autumn. No questions, thank you. Carol. No questions, thank you. Kwame. Uh, no questions, thanks. Michael. Same here, no questions, thank you. Joe. None. Donna. No questions. Um, no, nice sand though, that's a nice beach you got there. I'm concerned about the runoff and the um, erosion, but I don't know, this project has nothing to do with that. The material under the deck that's being removed will continue to be that concrete slab? Correct. Okay. Anybody in the audience would like to comment on this project? Anybody online? Okay, hey, Josh, your recommendation? Uh, the recommendation is a negative three and a negative six. Okay, let's close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Can I, I ask a question? And a second. Oh, hold on. I think he... You want to ask a question? Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry, Sandra, for interrupting. I just didn't understand what a negative three and a negative six means. It's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> I guess when you hear the word negative, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> It means you, we're, going, we're going to approve your project. Oh, thank you. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> That's all right. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, 600. Zero, zero. It is six, isn't it? One, two, three, six, zero, zero. Um, six in favor, opposed, abstain, 600. Zero, zero. The hearing is closed. Move that thank we... You. Accept this project, approve this project with a negative six and a negative three determination. Second. second. I have that motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. It's approved six zero zero. Uh, Michael, before you start anything, get a hold of uh, Josh and work it out, okay? Yes. With the paperwork. 
Thank you. Yes, no, no problem. Thank you. Have a great night. Happy New Year to everyone. Yeah, thank you. Happy New Year. All right. Next one, please. You notice of intent. Yes. Uh, this is the request on the notice of intent for Norma Langford, trustee, 12 Mayflower Avenue, Wareham, Mass. 02538, to install a new 1,500-gallon septic tank with microfast 0.5 unit. A thousand gallon pump chamber and four five hundred gallon leaching chambers within the hundred foot buffer zone to a pond or drainage basin. Map one nineteen lots F and G twelve Mayflower Ave, Wareham, Mass. And for correction, it's Mayflower Lane. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Since I grew up on Mayflower Avenue, I said, Where in the world is twelve? <laughs> no. No. It's mm -hmm. Mayflower Lane. All right, so who's here representing this project? Madam Chairman, Brian Grady, GAF Engineering. Okay, Brian. All right, as uh, just read into the record, this is an upgrade to an existing failed sewage disposal system. Uh, <clears throat> the house is approximately 50 years old. We believe this to be the original system to the home. So as part of that, uh, you'll see that the, to the rear of the property, it's a walkout and there's an existing septic tank pump chamber in the back because there are facilities in the basement. Uh, those will be removed from site and new pump chamber and new septic tank installed. Uh, the pump chamber will pump the effluent to the front yard uh, to maximize the distance to the pond. Um, erosion controls will be placed. We are showing a dewatering basin. There may be uh, a, a slight need to dewater. Those tanks might be a foot and a half, two feet into the water, depending on the time of year and, and when they're constructed. Uh, so probably the, what will happen is the existing uh, septic tank will be removed. The new septic tank will go in probably first uh, to minimize interruption uh, with the people in the house so they can continue to use their facilities. And then the remainder of, of the work will continue from there. Access will be from the right of the home uh, over the leaching field and down that slope, remove the fence, remove one large uh, tree there. Uh, access will, for the tank to drop into the holes will be from the right side. And probably the last bit of work will be the construction of the field itself. And if I could answer any questions. You're going to disturb those little ducks. Boy, did they like that pond. Oh, they, the geese are even worse. Sorry. Um, Josh. They're, they're, they visit their backyard quite often. Yes. Yeah. Josh, your comments, please. I have no comments. Questions will go around. Um, Paula Jean. No questions. Thank you. Autumn. No questions. Thank you. Carol. Due to the slope where it goes down to that pond, what are you going to use for buffering the water from the uh, construction? We're, we're calling for a 12 inch wattle. 12 inch will be high enough, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Call me. Uh, no questions, thanks. Michael. Carol actually already beat me to the questions about those and control measures. Just quickly on the map, what's the, what line's the difference between the erosion control line and the 30 foot no activity line? I'm just out of curiosity. Well, the erosion control is kind of that heavy rectangular line. The right. 30 feet is the, so that, the so dash hold, dot dot line. So hold on. so that one right there going up, that was the erosion control line right there. And the 30 foot no activity line is the one that goes, that kind of starts going up and then takes that's a, the 30 takes foot, a right going in. Yeah, it crosses over the tanks. Yes, that's All the right. 30 foot. All right. So. So activity is going to be done in the 30 foot no activity zone, is that? That's correct. correct? That's correct. All right. The Isn't that where the tank is now? Is that, uh, what, is that what portion of the tank is in that zone, yes. Yep. And that's rear yard, lawn area. If you got to visit the site, there is a pond, there's no fringe wetlands, it does receive drainage from Mayflower Lane and, and other roadways, so, you know, it's not a, it's, it's, it's a pond slash drainage basin. Um, question, will you be backfilling when the tanks come out? Is that just going to be filled in with 
Yeah, the tanks so will come out, be collapsed in place, one or either or. The, uh, the septic tank will come out, the pump chamber, they have the option of collapsing it in place, but it'll all be compacted and backfilled so that no sinkholes form afterwards. Okay. They'll be pump dry first, obviously. Right, right. Yes. Joe, any questions? Michael, anything no, no, else? No, that was it. No, thank you. Joe? None for me. I had none. Anybody? Donna? Donna. Sorry. Um, so this, I don't know, this, this probably doesn't pertain to Conservation Commission. Um, this is not a nitrogen reducing system, correct? It's a Title it V. Is. It is a nitrogen reducing. Yes. Is it required now in the city of, in the town of Wayne? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our Title, Board of Health says all Title V must be nitrogen reducing. Yes, we do. So they have their own telephone line and electrical and all of that stuff that goes with it. Okay, anybody online or in the audience would like to talk to this project, speak to this project? No. I'm seeing none. Josh, your recommendations? Uh, standard order of conditions. Okay. I'd motion. like to close the, close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 600, the hearing is closed. Motion to approve the project with standard order of conditions. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, 600. Done. Please see Josh before you start the work. I'm assuming you got the file. Yeah. I didn't ask about the green cards. I guess you got it. So I'm requiring uh, all applicants to upload the green cards to the project. Say that again. All the green cards get scanned. And oh, then okay. they get uploaded to the project, so. <clears throat> we only had two new hearings? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Okay. Now we're on to continued ones. The prime engineering for 370 County Road was already continued until January 17th. We have Faring Hill LLC County Road Hidden Trails was continued until the 3rd. Are they here? Brad did tell me he was coming tonight. Um, I have them online. Oh. <clears throat> uh, good evening. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, this is Brad Batol with JC Engineering. Uh, I wanted to uh, attend tonight's hearing just to request a continuance. We've submitted numerous emails uh, over the last few hearings, um, but I'd like to just show face tonight. Um, we are currently still waiting on uh, environmental review from the consultant hired by the commission. So we, we're hopes that we get information later this week and try to address it next week uh, so that hopefully we have information to present in two weeks. So ultimately we would, would like to request a continuance for two weeks. You're looking for January 17th? Yes, please. And I did talk to our peer review consultant. Uh, he has the wetland delineation done He's now working on the uh, the stormwater uh, and uh, the stormwater calcs and the review of the actual road layout. We did receive an initial peer review. Did you want to talk about that tonight or wait until we're continued on the 17th? I, I would say let's just wait and hear it all at once. I think okay. that makes the most sense. So that's the request to, to, to continue? Just request the continuance. Until 117? Yes, motion to request a motion for a continuance until 117.24. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? This continued 600 until the 17th. Thank you. Happy New Year, Brad. You too. The next hearing was um, the Nine Maple Ave. Anybody here for that particular project? 
because we did get a new plan that showed the reconfiguration of the uh, deck. Anybody online? Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Jed Hanna with Atlantic Coast Engineering. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, Jen, thank you. Excellent. You're okay, up. so uh, just to, to recap on this project, um, we met back in December. Uh, th this project uh, is basically a, uh, a raise of the existing uh, dwelling. It's a building department directive um, as a result of um, improvements that were made to the home over a series of permits um, which triggered the substantial improvement regulation uh, over 50 percent so um, that's kind of the background uh, the home is also well into the FEMA flood zone and so um, as we discussed at the last hearing um, and as you can see on the structurals and the site plans we're planning to go up uh, approximately 11 feet, um, utilizing uh, concrete footings and piers. Um, we also discussed that you know it's a, it's a very it's a tight site. Um, I'm sure you know if we're able to get an order of conditions, I would suggest one of the conditions be that you know we have a coordination meeting with you know the contractor, the abutters, to make sure that. You know, we're the contractors respectful of everybody's space and noise ordinances um, and all that good stuff. Uh, the update we made to the plan um, is basically enough to have enough setback from the retaining wall. You know, we we uh, did what we could in the best spirit of conservation's uh, comments, so that the deck didn't get enlarged. But at the same time, we did have to add. Um, additional steps because of the increase in height. So um, the plan is before you, and, and again, it it complies as best we can to to shrink the size um, with respect to the setbacks from the resource areas. But clearly, we had to add more steps to to bring it up to the elevation that's required by by FEMA and the building code. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Just to confirm, I thought the building was going up 23 feet. I thought I heard 10 earlier. Uh, that would be elevation 23. Oh. Um, so the net, the net is approximately 11. Okay. From the existing. Josh, your comments, please. Uh, so I think one of the, the biggest comments of the increase in the 30 foot no activity zone has been uh, placed into what was already existing. So I don't see that as a concern anymore. And one of our standard orders conditions is a pre-construction meeting. So um, we can definitely meet out there with the contractor to discuss those, those type of issues that you wanted to address. Okay, great, thank you. All right, we'll go around the board. Donna, questions? No questions. Paula Jean? No, no questions, thank you. Autumn? No questions, thank you. Carol. No, thank, uh, no questions, thank you. Kwame. Uh, no questions, thanks. Michael. Uh, just what type of, uh, hey, what, what type of um, erosion control measures are you going to put in place for, for any uh, runoff here? Sure. So we have a, a mulch sock proposed. Um, we could certainly add a silt fence for, you know, belt and suspenders if the commission would prefer that. But we have a mulch sock proposed. Okay, because I, I saw in the um, I, saw, I saw in the plan mentioned erosion controls and erosion controls, but it wasn't anything specific. So I was just curious if you had any any ideas. That was all. And also, where sure, yeah, th there is a detail shown on the on the drawings right there. It's at the bottom there that uh, compost filter tube with with mulch. Oh, okay. Well, okay, that was okay. I, I probably missed that then. Um, sec secondly, where would the um, equipment be, be stored overnight? Because obviously it's a very tight area and you're not gonna be able to store it down there, obviously, I would imagine. Yeah, great question. I mean, we'll have to coordinate that with the contractor and obviously um, appease the abutters 
um, as best we can. So it may be a situation where other than a dumpster being on site, all equipment goes home at, you know, at the end of every shift. Um, but we can coordinate that certainly in the pre-construction meeting. All right. Thank you. Joe. None for me. Um, currently, there is some um, items along the side of the building for heating, air conditioning, et cetera, et cetera. How will they be, where will they be placed when this is raised? Because I don't see anything in the plan for footings for them. So typically what we recommend um, and what we've done in other projects uh, like this is we put in, um, we, we recommend and we, we put it, we'll put them in the building plans to have uh, cantilever knee brace brackets. Okay. On the, on the side of the footings or the house so that everything stays elevated, which is part of the FEMA requirements to keep all machinery above the, the flood zone. So that's definitely something that we'll have to um, address in the elevation certificate and in the building permit application process. And there'll be nothing built to restrict any water flow under the building. That's correct. Josh, your comments, please. How long does a project like this usually take? It typically th uh, three to six months, depending on you know weather and logistics and and such. And you have an idea of when you plan to start? So I believe we're gonna have to go to zoning. I have to double check that with the building commissioner. Um, I know the owner, subject to pricing, of course, the, the owner would like to do it this year. So um, we'll certainly keep conservation commission uh, abreast on the, the timeline, but um, not really sure at this point. Okay. Anybody in the audience would like to comment on this project? Please come forward and identify yourself. Good afternoon, my name's John Coe. I'm a director of Butter, 5 Maple Ave. John, can you spell your last name for me? Sure, it's C-O-E. Oh, okay. Yeah, very easy. <laughs> All right, John, your comments, please. I, I just, uh, I actually attended this meeting, I don't know if this is the correct form, but I've got no information on this project. And as you can see from the map, uh, the house itself is probably less than four feet from my fence. The house is maybe 15, 20 feet from, from my home. Um, I just put extensive money into renovations in my home, which was permitted properly. And um, I've tried to contact Atlantic Engineering on three separate occasions now with, with no callback, um, no response from them. So I'm just, I'm just basically trying to find out what the impact is going to be to me because it's, it's basically right on top of me. Yeah, your brand new fence. <laughs> brand new house, pretty much, too. I'm um, sorry. Josh, is he listed as an abutter? I'm looking at it now. It's hard to believe that it wouldn't have been unnoticed with the green cards. I'm sorry, I just wanted to. That's okay. So I did get noticed that there was going to be a meeting, I think, two weeks ago. Yes, okay, perhaps. so you did get noticed. So I did get noticed. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just, like I said, again, I'm just trying to find out what the impact of this project is going to be because, you know, a couple of things you had mentioned too. The road is a private way, it's dirt. Um, it's very tight, especially during the summertime. Um, I don't have a lot of parties, but my neighbor <laughs> to the other side does, so there's a lot of cars and traffic. Yeah, and, and I think he's got his company's cars in there, too, so. Oh, so you know, yeah. Frank. <laughs> well, no, I've been down that road. <laughs> so, but anyhow, like you said, I'm just trying to get some information on, on what the impact is, is going to be. And uh, like I said, Atlantic to this point has been unresponsive, so. I, basically coming to the meeting to find out. I mean, at least I can see the plan now somewhat, but um, you know, I don't know if that's a question or a comment, but. <laughs> so if, if you want to um, give me your email address, I can email you all the plans, the application. I can, I can give you all that material. Um, Jed, as far as the actual work goes to you know, raise this house, can you speak briefly to that? Sure, um, and just a, a, a quick, answer to, to Mr. Ko. Uh, I did receive a voicemail from you um, just this evening. I did not receive any other, you know, voicemails or correspondence. I actually was about to call you because uh, you called maybe an hour ago and I, um, we got called up for the hearing. So sorry to get a chance to call you back. But again, that was the only correspondence I got. So um, that was the third time. But okay. 
<laughs> yeah. So again, I, I didn't see any other voicemails or any anybody let me know that you, you had reached out. So uh, I don't know where the uh, miscommunication was there, but I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Um, you know, when we when this finally uh, it kicks off, we will have a pre-construction meeting, and you're certainly welcome to um, participate. Uh, the, the intent is to be as least invasive to a butters you know without any damage to fence line or, or anything else um that's why these these contractors are, are licensed and insured um and so again this is a this is a building department directive whereby the the home has to be raised because of the significant improvements and the fact that it's well below the fema flood zone um but i'd be happy to you know send you the plans or, or josh can and we'll, we'll work with you through the project uh to, to minimize you know disturbances and such this is the building in the front not the shed in the not the two sheds in the back so it's the it's not all three are going up just the big one in the front that's correct that yeah. will be a challenge you will have a very noisy summer well, i hope not <laughs> so yeah. give your information to josh and he will give you what what we have so far on it. Thank you. It's right up in that top corner. Okay, thank you, John. Is there anybody else who would like to comment on this project? Motion to close the hearing? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I don't, there's no other comments on it. I think we've had our answers. We've received our answers. The front, the, the deck area around by the 30 foot has been modified to be within the existing footprint. So I think that was it. Okay. So I had a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstain six zero zero. The hearing is closed. Your recommendation, Josh. Uh, it would be a standard order of conditions, and I would also include that um, <clears throat> uh, yard waste of any kind needs to be taken off the site, and that will be a uh, perpetual condition, not uh, dumped into the, the wetlands. So um, yard waste off-site every day? Um, Just off, not dumped? In well, the standard order of conditions is that you can't leave any type of waste during construction, but I'm saying specifically yard waste. So yard you know, waste. Lawn, lawn clippings, tr trimming of the branches, anything like that. So that that's the area between this property and the um, Safe Harbor Marine. Safe Harbor building. Right. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, and that there should be no expansion, future expansion of the deck within the no activity zone. And that will be a continuing condition as well. So moved. That be the motion. All in, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, six, zero, zero. Done. Um, work with um, Josh for your permits, okay? Will do, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night. Right. Next is certification of compliance requests. We have two. Uh, so the first one is for 10 Squirrel Island Road, SE 0762799. Uh, I went out to the site and I believe this is the second property that has our Wareham uh, no activity signs on it. So. Uh, they are slowly making their way into existence, which I think is a good thing. Um, so with that being said, I would recommend the issuance of a certificate of compliance. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Six zero zero. Done. Next one, please. And the second one is for Four Sandpiper Terrace, SC 076-2639. And this was for the construction of a septic system, which has been completed. So I would recommend the issuance of a certificate of compliance. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Six zero zero. We have a continued hearing for um, Danny Warren 
for the um, whatever he wants, what he's planning to do on his property on 59 Main Street. We continue at the last meeting. We said we would continue until January 17th, 2024. So that holds. I guess depending on what you read at what time, we don't know what's going to be built there. Uh, so the next one. Um, we did get an amended agenda. Unfortunately, it was amended within the 48 hour, cannot change your agenda time frame. So we will put the Sawyer, uh, Sawyer property um, CR on the next agenda for vote discussion and vote and approval because it has been modified and updated, just I cannot work on it tonight. Right. Um, I the, the modifications that you're voting on were uh, clerical. At yes, most. It, yes, it was. But and because we were, she wanted um, wanted to wait until it was finalized, we did not vote it on the last meeting. Um, I went through the minutes on December 20th, and I noticed we never voted on the December 6th set of minutes. They will be added to the agenda on January 17th, so we'll be voting to December 6th at that time. We did receive a set of minutes for December 20th. Anybody, any comments on it? I remember we were discussing the minutes because there was an error about the time we ended. I know, but so I that's in my head that we didn't vote. I never found a vote uh, when the minutes for December 20th were produced. There was nothing on there about a vote, and I went through my notes and could find nothing. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but so we have minutes for December 20th that have been distributed. Any comments on them? I gave my comments to Josh. Yep. No other comments. Mm -hmm. Correction. Was it? Okay. Motion so, to approve the minutes of December 20th. I have a motion to accept the minutes of December 20th. So, in a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Saying six zero zero. Um, anything else? I don't know why we have people in the audience. Any comments? Huh? We missed you. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. Do we need to vote on that other set of minutes? No not on the agenda I cannot oh, vote. I cannot okay. we cannot vote on December 6th because it's not on the agenda uh, come on down and make your comments identify yourself please I'm getting there Nancy McHale uh, Faring Hill Road uh, it's as you know, I've, I'm very involved with the conservation of lands in town, the planning department, et cetera. I'm just wondering, I know that Josh is working very diligently to get um, the Conservation Commission documents kind of lined up a little bit more with the way the planning board and the ZBA um, have some of theirs so that you can actually go on that site and the public can view what's what's happening with those projects. So I didn't know where that initiative stood and it's clear from Mr. Coe that he was having issues trying to figure out what was going on with that property as well. And that's what prompted me to actually say something. So my question is any, through you to Josh, any, <laughs> any update on that? Uh, so I would say uh, the transition to the open gov format is going well. It is taking time to get everyone in line with it uh, just because it is a new technology and you know not everyone's familiar with it. So I would say it's going it's going pretty well. Um, as far as the troubles that Mr. Co had, um, he, he would have received an abutter notification that would have given him you know, the details on where to get the plans, et cetera. Um, I don't believe he reached out to me at all, which I you know, would have made them available. Um, but they, they also, the butter notification also could have had Atlantic as the supplier of the plans as well. So I'll have to look into that to see exactly what it was, but. Um, okay. Um, uh Back to general questions about things like, there was a comment that for the 
hidden trails project that you've gotten um, information or a first draft on some stuff from the, um, the consultant. And is that available to the general public? And if so, how? Uh, it will be. Um, I haven't posted the entire. So our peer review consultant will give us uh, generally a letter stating any description of you know, what he felt had to be changed with the wetland line, what has to be changed with the stormwater management, et cetera. And um, normally that will all come in a giant packet together. So he, um, <coughs> uh, the applicant uh, for Hidden Trails had asked for a um, update on where he was with that packet and he was willing to share with us the wetland delineation because that was already complete. Okay. Um, we are still waiting for the rest of the peer review. But the goal is that any project information will be tied into the open gov system. So you'll be able to find the notice of intent, you'll be able to find um, any peer review if it's done, any additional information about our notification. And then if the project is approved, you'll be able to find the order of conditions there as well. And then eventually uh, you'll see a certificate of compliance and that will all be tied to the property. Okay, and all of that would be then in the, on the Conservation Commission's page of the town's website under conservation projects? No. How would people access this? So um, what, what the Planning and Zoning Department have done is they've created a filing cabinet for projects mm -hmm. where you go into it on the town website we are using the OpenGov platform to do that. Okay, then I'm ignorant so, of that. Can so you it, it, that? it would be a link to the OpenGov platform that would be found on the conservation page. And then you would be able to look up the project by address, by application number, um, that kind of stuff. So it, where you would go to the town page directly for the information, you, you would have to download them as attachments for zoning and planning. This is an additional step where you would have to go to the OpenGov platform to find all this. Right. And this is better because it ties everything in by map and lot versus just having a folder with a description of the property. Okay. And um, I believe the planning and zoning board are eventually gonna move the OpenGov way instead of doing it the way they are. I, I just don't think they have the manpower to start that process. I, I understand limited capacity. Um, <clears throat> any thought as to when that will, this open gov will be up and running for CONCOM? It's open, it's up right now. How, how, how do I find out what projects are there and how to, to find it? Um, that's a great question. I can, I can make it a little more clear on our webpage. I can start by doing that, but I guess I can quickly run the demo right now to show people who are interested. I, it, it's very brief. I pulled it up right now and it says for me to get in, I have to have the start date and the end date of a project to search. Let me run a quick demo. Great. Thank you. No, no problem. <clears throat> so, and, and again, um, I really appreciate your questions because it, you know, kind of shows me flaws in the system that, you know, I work with the system, so it's very familiar it's to me. It's accessible to you. Um, no, I, I think it's great that we're doing this. So okay. um, what I'll do here is I'll go to the town website. And when you're on the town website, you have the option to go to uh, departments, which if you scroll down, it's alphabetical, you'll see the conservation department. Or if you go to boards, <laughs> Again, this is alphabetical. You'll see the Conservation Commission. Um, whether you click on department or commission, it brings you to the same exact page. Uh, it was kind of redundant to, to have two pages with the same information. So they both bring you to the same exact page. Um, right now it's kind of geared towards uh, applicants. So to start the online application, you would click here. And this is a link that will bring you to the OpenGov system. So again, this is geared towards applicants, but um, so here are the current applications that you are able to submit via OpenGov. 
And if you scroll down a little more, you can find a search records function. And um, through this function, if you know the, the record name, you can search it by record. But it's much more easier if you just say, uh, do it by address. So if I type in Nine Maple, um, it'll bring up Nine Maple Ave. And this shows you building permits that have been pulled on the property, historical permits, um, any type of property or uh, permits that have, are associated with the property. So you can find, you know, conservation as a notice of intent, click there, and this will give you a general outline. Um, you know, the applicant, this is the uh, applicant stating that they done the abutter notification. Um, and there, there's some more um, inform information here that's less need to know for the public, but it's still available. Um, then you would click on files, and that's where you would be able to see you know, the notice of intent and the, uh, the set of plans. Josh, this is amazing. I had absolutely no idea that this existed. Well, then I guess that's a, a shame on me for not making it better known. But had absolutely no clue because so. there's the space that says conservation projects and there's nothing there. And that's where we, the general public, would go to see um, planning projects, ZBA projects, <coughs> conservation projects. So it makes sense that it, it be there. Um, yeah. So when I first started with the town, that was one of the things that the directing planner wanted me to do. And I felt that the open gov system was a lot more efficient at doing it than a single folder on the town website. So I'm going to make a note to one make finding the open go system more appropriate for you know the general public and i will also get rid of the empty projects folder that uh, or maybe make the empty projects folder have a uh, instructions as to how to find the open gov section at least until people know where it is that's a good idea too yeah i have no problem doing that um you know point people in the right direction yeah, because if you're, you know, if you're look, searching for something and you're acting like you're an applicant when you're not, that's not where you'd think to look. Yeah, yeah. I never <clears> looked <throat> in the applications because I'm not an applicant. That's totally fair. And I will say the commission is a little uh, spoon-fed because I send them the link to all the projects individually. So they've never had to look them up the way that I just explained. So they probably didn't even know it was an issue either. Okay. So... I appreciate your concerns. They're, they're good critiques. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hate to be, you know. <sighs> no, we need that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. They, it, they've got to be somewhere. It's because you're not four years old. If you were four years old, you could find anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Any appreciate other comments? It. Next time a phone call will suffice. <laughs> okay. Right, but then it's oh. just me that knows. Right. Now this way. Eh? Nope, okay. totally okay. fair. Okay, thanks. Yes, in the back. Yeah. I just have a quick question for Josh. You have to come. F come. And what brings you here? You know who I'm looking at. You had nothing else to do on a Wednesday night? Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and identify if those people who don't remember you. Oh. Not everybody had a boat at the marina. No. David War is my name. Um, I, I came, obviously, because I have an, still have an interest in what goes on in the town of Wareham, although I probably have, have um, backed away from things in the last number of years. I was chair of the Conservation Commission in Wareham, member and chair for many years, and, and it, I'm impressed at the professionalism that I see now. When I was chair, first of all, we had no agent or whatever you're called. Um, I had to put everything in the paper, write all the orders, do everything. This is great. Um, and the, my experience uh, that I gained here when, when uh, uh, the town of Gosnold 
which includes Cuddy Hunk, um, decided to um, move from having the selectmen act as the commission, which we were the last community in the Commonwealth where that was the case. Well, there are only 10 people on the island year round, so right. yeah, <laughs> not a lot to people. It's a bit of a problem finding yes. people, but um, I, I jumped at the chance. Uh, I, I don't know whether that was a mistake or not. I've been uh, chair for 15 years now, and, and dealing with issues on an island that includes, of course, all the Elizabeth Islands has been quite uh, quite a, a, a journey. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I am impressed by what I see. I, I came off island uh, um, a few weeks ago to attend a, um, a meeting of the Bourne Conservation Commission. They had a whole lot of stuff going on because I, I like to sort of see what happens in the, the rest of the world or, or the, the world outside of being on that little island. So that's why I'm here. And I was, but you continued the, the hearing that I came particularly oh, to. Oh, sorry. The one dealing with, with raping pine barrens. So, um, so that's why I'm here. Well, you can always get us on Zoom. True, that's true. But you know, so. I, I, in the winter, I, we, we still meet once a month and I go down for select board meetings. But I, I, I like to be. In person is better. I use Zoom. I use it sometimes in, in my teaching, but um, I, I just like to be present personally. And, and of course, on the island, we have these wonderful technical problems where sometimes, you know, you can't, you know, the, the, the connection, the, the internet goes out, and then we have to call it. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. So that's, I'm I yes. came because I cared about something going on. Will you continue to watch what we're doing? I will. And thanks for coming. And I, and I actually, I would love to um, learn more about this open gov thing. Um, and and you also mentioned, if, if I can ask, you have a, a standard order of conditions. Yes. Um, Josh, where can he find it? Um, I'd, I'd be curious to see it. Why don't you give me a call tomorrow in the office, and I'd be more than happy to give you information on OpenGov and our standard order of That'd conditions. Be, extension 6505, <laughs> extension 6505, 291 3100, extension 6505. That's Josh's number. Yes. And another question Do you have a specific? Um, I'm curious, uh, we, we don't have a what many consider to be an adequate uh, fee structure, let me put it that way. And oh, Josh can give you our fee structure. Yeah, that would be great. You guys are looking for a part-time agent. I don't work on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> for the record. The alert still travels, doesn't it, back and forth? The alert <laughs> is gone. Oh, so how does people get on and off? I'm very, yeah, oh, from there's, okay, alert. from New Bedford? The alert died. Oh, I didn't see. That's been how long is I've been on since I've been out there. It died. Mm. So now they have the Cuddy Hunk Ferry. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. It has heat. Yeah, heat. Wow. And so, heat. Yes, that's right. It has heat. Okay. <laughs> so we do have a standard order of conditions. Yeah. I'm currently drafting uh, more standard order of conditions to make them more project specific, because obviously a project right on the ocean is a lot different than a project on a wetland. Sure. So um, in the coming months, we will have specific standard order of conditions to certain projects. Yeah. And we are updating our bylaws. Our, our bylaws are getting updated. Yes, and you have a local. Uh, I wish we had one. Cause so we can be more, <coughs> more strict than this state. I know. I was, <coughs> I, I was part of it when that unfolded. <coughs> uh, and the one thing I liked about it is that it has an issue. It, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't it have something about aesthetics? Yes. It, something it looks like? Uh, yes, it does have something about aesthetics, but to deny a project on aesthetics is uh, I know, not so a very good idea. Obviously. obviously <laughs> not. We tried to do something with that, with the wonderful nonsense that they put up at Bessie Park there. Remember that? When they shoved those cement things down between I beams, which we thought was not at all consistent with the and it didn't work because a rock got in the way and it under it 
eroded behind it, and so that's why, yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, it, it's it's fun to be here. I, I, uh, I've enjoyed it. Well, it's nice seeing you. And, and it's a learning experience for me, too, as well, even though I've been at it for a long time. Thank you. Take care. Give me a call. And I will. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Anybody else? If not, oh, I have, sorry, I'm going to take two seconds. Alan, if you're watching, 55 years and thank you. I'm about to have our 55th wedding anniversary, so I just wanted Congratulations. to thank you. I know. Who's to say? It's the question. Is it me putting up with Alan or Alan putting up with me? That is the discussion that happens all the time as to who's at... Uh, it's a two-way street. Yes, it's a two-way street. But thank you. I just I needed to. It doesn't happen all the time. So if someone wants nothing else to do, can you please a motion to close? Ah, motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. What time is it? Wow, that's See awesome. you at six o'clock next meeting. Oh yeah, six o'clock.